Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to create a mobile app for free without code and maybe you wanted to have either a text conversion element or you're looking to utilize some form of text converting or alterations, stay tuned. I'm going to be covering the basics in this video. Now, what I have been doing in many of my videos in the past is utilizing AppGyver, which is a great resource. Feel free to check out their pricing page to confirm it's free for those making 10 million or less in revenue, at least at the time of filming this video. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. First thing we need to do is scroll down on your YouTube page just a bit, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. That way you're all always up to date and then drop any questions or comments below. All right, so we're going to make this application together because it's relatively simple. So I have a blank AppGyver page. If you have questions on how to use AppGyver, I'll put some video tutorials in the description as well. But basically, we have a title and a text field that I've dragged over. Nothing aesthetically pleasing, just basic stuff right now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have an input field here. And then we're going to have another text field here. So what we'll do is we'll just put something like start typing, which tells the user, hey, type something here. Then we need a variable so that we can actually save this. Now, I don't need this variable to be, ac variable to be accessed anywhere else. So we'll just put, I'll just call it user input, and I'll just make it a page variable. We'll click save and go back here. So I just use that variable slider. And now when we select this input field, we can click on value and you can use data and variables, but I prefer formula just because it's a little bit easier when you're getting started to grab certain things. So we'll just put the page variable user input and we'll click save and save. Now what we need to do is we need to make the content here the same so we are going to basically delete everything here, go to page variables, and we're going to do user input again. Now, this may seem a little redundant, but the reasoning is we're basically displaying exactly what the user types. So we're going to open the app preview portal just to test this out real quick. So the test or text converter will type in hello. And you'll see it immediately displays the text and it basically updates in real time. Now, what we want it to do is save the variable, which it's already doing, and then we want to change something. For example, uh, let's go to the content here. Now, I have a replace all function that I've used in a previous video, and I'm just going to give you a general understanding. So we're going to delete everything but a basic replace statement. So we have replace all and then we'll have the app variable. And then what we're replacing is a bracket with nothing. So to show you how this sample one would work, we're gonna to go to app variables and we will use the, actually we're gonna be using the page variable that we just had. So to show you how this statement works, we can actually scroll through and you can see the different text utilities or options that you can use. So if you click on replace all, you'll see how this works. You'll see an example here and here and here. So you'll see in this example, we have replace foo bar baz with, uh, you'll see bar and baz. So it ends up being replacing the word bar with the word baz or B-A-Z. So you'll see now we have foo, baz, baz. So that's the general idea. So when you have text foo bar, and then you want to replace baz with bar, you'll see nothing changes because the word or the letters B-A-Z are not there. So pretty basic stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the replace all statement, and we're just going to replace brackets with nothing. And we'll click save. And for clarity, it's broken down into three parts, the text that's there or the variable, what you want to replace and what you want to replace it with. So now we're going to click save and now we'll start typing again and you'll see it updates in real time. But what happens when we put a bracket? So you'll see if we put in a curly bracket, it's there, but normal brackets are not being displayed. So every time we 
add in a curly bracket, it works, spaces and letters are working, but then standard brackets do not show up because the replace statement is working here as expected. Now, if you wanted to make it a little bit more complicated, we can use what I had earlier. So when we go here, we're just going to replace the page variable, user input. Now we're going to replace, let's just say we want to replace the letter A with nothing. And then the letter, let's just say B with nothing. So what we have here is replace all statement one encapsulated within replace all statement two. So replace all is going to replace in the page variable, every letter A with nothing. That's why I have two quotes with nothing in between. And then it's going to be replacing all of the letter B with nothing. So now we'll click save and we will save it. And then you'll see, we'll type in the letter A, B, C, A, B, C, and you'll see that no matter how many times we paste this in, only the letters C come out. So the last thing that we're going to do together is basically just replace something with something else. So we'll put, we'll replace the letter A with ha ha, and then the letter B with even more. And then we'll click save. And now when we go over here, we'll type in A, B, A, B, A, B. So you'll see in real time how it's changing it. But if we type in the letter C, it's just the letter C. So no matter what letter you type in, it's always going to basically either type in that letter and display it or display the version or whatever it is that you want it to essentially display. So this could have different uses depending on whether you want this to be done in the background or in the actual user interface itself. But I hope that showed you the general idea. So if you're getting information, whether it be from third party sources or whatever the case is, and let's just say you needed to convert something like, uh, let's just say you're converting a currency and you needed to convert pounds to dollars, then you could convert the symbol and then the numbers themselves, there are tons of different applications. You just have to be careful with how exactly you'd be doing that. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.